So very good evening doctors. Today I am going to discuss another one important uh, uh, practical case for final year MBBS students that is mass per abdomen. Isn't it doctors? You all know two important differential diagnoses for mass per abdomen. One is uterine mass that is fibroid. Another one is ovarian mass. Now dear doctors in this video we will discuss what are all the symptoms does the fibroid or that is the uterine mass when comes to the gynecopedy or what are all the symptoms does this ovarian mass will comes to the gynecopedy that is symptomatology then we will discuss few things related to the examination that is general physical examination and per abdomen examination yes yes we'll start now let's be a doctor come to the fibroid regarding the age this fibroid is most common in reproductive age group and peri perimenopausal age group and regarding the parity, see, nulliparous women are more prone for fibroid. Nulliparous women are more prone for fibroid. Now, come to the ovarian mass. Regarding the age, germ cell tumors are more common in younger age group. And epithelial tumors, epithelial ovarian tumors are more common in older age group. That is the regarding age. And regarding the parity, doctor, once again, nulli paris woman is a risk factor for ovarian tumor. Yes, yes. So in the patient particulars, concentrate on age and parity. Now come to the uh, uh, symptomatology of the fibroid. Dear doctors, make it two columns. First column, take it as a fibroid, that is uterine mass. And second column, take it as a ovarian mass. Now, regarding the uterine mass, that is a fibroid. Doctor, the fibroid usually presents with menstrual complaint so what all the menstrual complaint they can come with profuse heavy bleeding that is menorrhagia or pain during menstruation that is dysmenorrhea or frequent periods polymenorrhea or intermenstrual bleeding that is metrorrhagia so these are all the menstrual complaints understood so fibroid means usually menstrual complaints and another one is mass per abdomen so these are all the two common complaints Related to fibroid, related to fibroid. If it is a huge fibroid, sometimes the patient com comes with pressure symptoms like edema or varicosity of the lower limbs. Or they can also come with respiratory, respiratory discomfort like breathlessness. If it is a huge fibroid, understood? Then if it is an anterior cervical fibroid, which will exert pressure over the bladder or urethra. So they can come with frequency or retention of urine. If it is a posterior cervical fibroid, it can exert pressure over the rectum. So they can have constipation or feeling of incomplete evacuation. Feeling of incomplete evacuation. Yes. So two common complaints related to fibroid is one is menstrual complaints. Another one is mass per abdomen. If it is a huge fibroid, pressure symptoms. Anterior cervical fibroid, urinary symptoms. Posterior cervical fibroid, rectal symptoms. Yes. Now. If there is any degenerated fibroid or if there is any fibroid pollen, they can come with vaginal discharge. They can come with vaginal discharge. Yes. Next, because of heavy menstrual bleeding, they can have features of anemia like palpitation, fatigue, easy fatigability, dyspnea. So these are all features of anemia due to menorrhagia. Yes. So these are all the symptoms related to fibroid. Please make a small box, take down the list. First is menstrual complaints and mass per abdomen. These are the two common complaints related to fibroid. Other common complaints due to huge fibroid, pressure symptoms, urinary symptoms, rectal symptoms, vaginal distress, features of anemia. Final take home message, 30 to 50% fibroids are asymptomatic, which is diagnosed incidentally on sonography. That is a final take home message. Means most common presentation is asymptomatic, that is related to fibroid. And most consistent symptom in relation to fibroid is menorrhagia, menorrhagia. Most common presentation of fibroid is asymptomatic. Most consistent symptom is menorrhagia. Yes, yes. So this is related to fibroid. Yes, now come to the ovarian mass. What all the symptoms related to ovarian mass you should ask from the patient. One is usually the common complaint the, this uh, patient comes with gynecopathy is mass per abdomen or abdominal distension. Yes, yes, yes. So doctor, this is the one case today in my gynecopathy. She is a 43 year old who approaches to me with the history of mass per abdomen or abdominal distension. Yes. That is a one complaint. Another one complaint, she is giving 
classical history of loss of weight or loss of appetite. Dear doctors, finally take home message. Yes, even fibroid mass also comes with mass per abdomen. But there is no loss of weight or no loss of appetite related to fibroid. But ovarian mass, dear doctors, they are also present with mass per abdomen. But classical, they will have cachectic symptoms like loss of weight or loss of appetite. And another one doctor, ovarian tumors are very, very unlikely to present with menstrual abnormality compared to fibroid. Yes, these are the final three take home messages related to symptomatology of fibroid and ovarian mass. Fibroid, ovarian mass. Fibroid, menstrual symptoms are common. Ovarian mass, menstrual symptoms are uncommon. Yes. This fibroid presents with mass per abdomen. Ovarian mass also mass per abdomen. Here, fibroid, no loss of weight, no loss of appetite. Means no cachectic symptoms. Here, ovarian mass, there will be features of cachectic symptoms like loss of weight or loss of appetite. Yes. Now, what are the other symptomatology related to ovarian mass? So, even ovarian mass, big ovarian mass can result to pressure symptoms. Big ovarian mass can result to what? Pressure symptoms like edema or varicosity of the lower limbs or even respiratory discomfort like dyspnea. Yes, so these are all the symptomatology related to what? Ovarian mass. I think with this symptomatology, we will proceed to the examination part of today's uh, mass per abdomen. I told you, dear doctors, in examination, so we are going to know general physical examination and another one is per abdomen examination and as an undergraduate you are not allowed to do any bimanual examination but the theory concept of bimanual examination should be known by the undergraduate because for practical exams yes yes now listen here doctor come to the general physical examination in fibroid and ovarian mass in fibroid specifically if it is a huge fibroid just look for anemia anemia why look for anemia due to menorrhagia and if it is a huge fibroid, look for edema in the lower limbs. If it is a huge fibroid, that is general physical examination related to fibroid. Now, general physical examination related to ovarian tumor. Yes, this is if this big ovarian tumor. Also look for edema or varicosity of varicosity of what lower limbs, and even look for anemia. And what are the features specific? What are the features specific? To what uh, general physical for examination findings specific to ovarian tumor is one is look for lymph node enlargement. Yes, that is a one thing. Also comment on breast and thyroid because breast tumors and ovarian tumors usually coexist. Yes, so these are all the general physical examination findings. Now, dear doctors, come to the parabdomen examination findings. Doctor, listen here. See, inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation. Understood? This all the core routinely you carry out. But what all the specific parabdomen examination findings related to fibroid, related to ovarian mass, I am going to show you on the patient now. Now, listen here. Dear doctors, now what I want to tell you is one thing, listen here. So, eight things are most important in palpation of any mass in gynecology. Eight points. What are the eight points? That is seven to eight points. One, sight, size, surface, consistency, margins, mobility, tenderness, and features of ascites. Please, please, you have to keep the eight points in the tip of fingers in mass per abdomen in gynecology. Sight, size, surface, consistency, margins, then tenderness, margins, tenderness, then another one is, that is the uh, features of ascites. Yes, these are the seven to eight points you have to concentrate. Now, listen here, doctor, doctor, if it is midline mass, doctor, if it is just midline mass, always, always comment in respect to weeks of uterus, weeks of pregnant uterus. Means, if it is a fibroid mass, that is, if it is a midline mass, always comment or describe in relation to weeks of pregnant uterus. That is mass of pelvis or a mass arising from the pelvis up to 12 weeks, 24 weeks or 28 weeks. Yes, if it is a midline mass. If it is not a midline mass, if the mass occupies more than one or two quadrants, then you can specify the mass of size like 24 to 25, whatever mass of size occupies these many quadrants. Yes, yes, this is about sight and size. Listen here, doctor. Once again, I will be telling if it is a midline mass, always describe the mass 
in relation to weeks of pregnant uterus. That is mass arising in the pelvis up to 12 weeks, 24 weeks, 28 weeks. Or if it is not a midline mass, that is if the mass occupies more than one or two quadrants, always describe mass occupies these many quadrants. Yes, see here the mass occupies even umbilicus, hypogastrium, uh, lumbar, hypochondrium. All these quadrants the mass occupies. Yes, the site and size. Yes, that is over. Now, comes to the consistency. Doctor, fibroid masses are forming consistency. Yes, ovarian masses, they are all cystic or smooth or firm or hard or variable. Yes, there can be any consistency in fiber. Ovarian mass related to benign or malignant nature. But fibroid masses are always form in consistency. But ovarian mass, they can be smooth, firm, or cystic, anything. Yes, that is about consistency. Then margins, doctor, here usually ovarian masses, and so ovarian masses, all borders, that is all margins are well defined. All borders are well defined except lower border. Listen here, in ovarian masses, all borders can be felt. Even lower border also can be felt in ovarian mass. But in fibroid, Doctor, lower border is not felt. That is a take home message. Dear doctor, in fibroid, lower border is not felt. But in, uh, in ovarian mass, all borders is felt. All border is felt. Yes. So, site is over, size is over, consistency is over, and borders is over. Then, come to the surface. Fibroid will also have sometimes regular or irregular size. Even this ovarian mass also will have smooth surface or irregular surface depending upon the nature, whether it is benign or malignant. Yes. Then tenderness, sometimes fibroid, if associated with torsion or degeneration, it is associated with tenderness. Yes. Understood? If ovarian mass, if it is associated with any uh, torsion, rupture, hemorrhage, it is also associated with tenderness. Then features of ascites, yes, always in fibroid. Ascitic features will be absent. In ovarian mass, classical ascitic features will be present. Yes, doctor, these are the eight point. Site, size, surface, consistency, borders, tenderness. Yes, borders, tenderness and features of ascites. And so, so seven to eight features. So, site, size, surface, consistency, borders, mobility, mobility. That is another one point. Doctor, fibroid masses are mobile only in horizontal. Yes. But ovarian masses are mobile in all directions. Yes, these are the eight points. Size, size, surface, consistency, borders, mobility, tenderness, features of ascites. So once again, I will quickly revise. Doctor, if it is a midline mass, always, doctor, midline mass, always describe in relation to weeks of pregnant uterus. If it is not a midline mass, that is if it occurs more than one quadrant, one or two quadrants, you describe whichever quadrant the mass occurs. Then consistency, fibroid is formed in consistency. Ovarian mass, it could be a form, cystic, hard or variable consistency. Yes. Doctor, border, border, border. Doctor, fibroid, lower border is not felt, not felt, not felt. But ovarian mass, all borders are felt. All borders are felt. Mobility, doctor, fibroids are mobile in horizontal direction. But restricted vertical mobility in fibroid. But ovarian mass, mobile in horizontal also. Mobile in vertical also. Yes. Tenderness, yes, can be present or cannot be present both in fibroid and ovarian mass. But features of ascites, always, always the feature of what? Ovarian mass. Yes, yes. Doctors, always look into, so see, this is the ovarian mass which occupies all, uh, occupies hypogastrium, <coughs> Uh, so, lumbar, hypochondrium, umbilicus, all regions. And here, doctor, here it is cystic consistency. It is cystic in consistency. Yes. And doctor, mobility, it is mobile. So, mobile in all directions. So, mobile in vertical direction also. Mobile in horizontal direction also. Yes, yes. And sometimes, doctor, even the lower border also is felt in ovarian mass. But lower border not felt in fibroid. Okay, doctors, in clinically also, we can say whether it is a benign ovarian mass or whether it is a uh, or malignant ovarian mass also. Yes, and clinically also. What are clinical features suggest you of benign ovarian mass? What are the clinical features suggest you of malignant ovarian mass? Yes, doctor, smooth surface, slow growing, unilateral, mobile, 
smooth surface, slow growing, unilateral, mobile, well defined features with no features of ascites. Benign, benign, benign. Smooth surface, slow growing, mostly unilateral, mobile, well defined with no features of ascites. Benign ovarian mass. Understood? No? Irregular surface, bilateral, bilateral, restricted mobility that is fixed mass. So irregular surface, bilateral, fixed with ill-defined margins with features of ascites always always malignant ovarian tumor yes doctor clinically look into that if it is unilateral smooth surface well-defined margins mobility with no features of ascites benign ovarian mass if it is bilateral fast growing yes with irregular surface with variable consistency with ill-defined margins with classical features of ascites like fluid till all this always features of what it is malignant ovarian Yes, yes. So, these are all the palpation findings. Understood? Never forget. Finally, take home message in palpation. Size, size, surface, consistency, borders, mobility, tenderness, features of ascites. Doctor, form and consistency, fine broad. Ovarian mass, form, cystic, smooth, or variable. Lower border, not felt, not felt, fine broad. All borders felt, it is ovarian mass. Restricted vertical mobility, fine broad. So, both mobile and horizontal and vertical, it is ovarian, ovarian. Yes, if it is midline mass, always describe in terms of weeks of pregnant uterus. Yes, yes. Doctor, finally, last but not the least, always, you, you are not undergraduate or not allowed to do the biomanual examination findings. But you have to know five to six biomanual examination findings. One, position of the cervix. You try and size and mobility. Third one, whether uterus felt separately from the mass or not. Fourth one, mobility of the mass is transmitted to cervix or Fifth one, growth sign. Doctor, listen here. First one, doctor, that is bimanual examination findings. Position of the cervix, uterine size and mobility. Third one, whether uterus felt separately or not. Transmission movement of the mass is transmitted to cervix or not. Or growth sign positive or not. Listen here, doctor. If it is uterine mass, that is fibroid. If you move the mass, means, doctor, if you move the mass, that pulsation is transmitted to the cervix. Because uterus is connected to cervix. Means transmitted mobility to the cervix is present in uterus. If you move the ovarian mass, we won't feel the pulsations in the cervix. That is ovarian mass. Yes? Means transmitted mobility, transmission of the mo transmitted mobility to the cervix is absent in ovarian mass. But transmitted mobility to the cervix is present in what? Uterine mass that is fiber. And uterus not felt separately from the mass in fiber. Because the fiber is arising from the uterus. That's why uterus is not felt separately from the mass. But in ovarian mass, that is uterus felt separately from the ovarian mass. That is uterus felt separately from the mass in case of ovarian mass. These are the three important biomedical examination findings. Yes. So always comment on position of the cervix, uterine size and mass. Yes, that is the one thing, uterine size and mass. And another one thing, whether uterus felt separately or not, and mobility of the mass is transmitted to cervix or not. And another one is growth sign. Growth sign always positive in ovarian mass. And so, doctor, please look into the video repeatedly. Make familiar the examination findings of mass per abdomen. Anyway, thank you, doctors. Thank